Hi everyone, this is just a short video to show you how to add custom error bars to your graph in Excel. Uh, as far as I know, you can only do this on the desktop version of Excel, so uh, do this on your own personal computer or in the computer lab or uh, the library or wherever you can go for something like this. Uh, there's a couple ways you could do it. Basically, first we have to turn on error bars. We can do that by clicking on the graph and then hitting this plus here, which shows different chart elements and we go to error bars, what we really want to do is go over here and go to more options, right? That'll turn the error bars on and it'll bring us to this option menu on the right. Uh, we could have also uh, turned this on by selecting the chart, going to chart design over here, add chart elements and error bars, but that seems um, too far. So anyway, plus error bars, more options. It, it automatically turns on error bars that have a fixed value, um, depending on what we pick. Yeah, so it looks like they automatically turn on a fixed value of one, right? It has no idea what this data is. Uh, by the way, this is made up velocity versus time data. Uh, we're pretending this is data from an experiment, which is why there's uncertainty associated with the measurements. Um, but, you know, they're not all one. And in some cases, they're not even the same values for different um, for different data points. So let's tackle the vertical error bars first. Uh, and you can do that by clicking on one. If you click on one, uh, all of the vertical error bars will highlight. And this little chart icon brings you to the options. Um, some things are the way we want them to be. We want that little cap at the end. We want it to be in both directions. What we want to do is change the error amount. So the options here are fixed value, which we don't have, uh, a fixed percentage, and they're not even the same percentage, or we could use standard deviation, which is not what we're supposed to do here, or whatever Excel considers standard error. I don't really know what that means. We want to add custom. We know exactly what the error is, the uncertainty is in every single data point, and we want to use those. So we'll go to custom and we'll specify the value, right? Um, that might be popping up because I played around with this before. Uh, anyway, what I mean is that it already has this area highlighted. Uh, we want for the positive error values to be this. It's plus or minus 0.06 or 0.11. Um, and negative plus or minus 0.06, 0.11, and so on. So we select that same column of our velocity uncertainties for both the positive error value and the negative error value. And click OK. Um, and if I... Just click away so that we can see those. You can see very tiny error bars down here uh, on this small velocity and then more sizable error bars towards the end. Um, and that's great. Um, for the horizontal error bars, we actually have two options. In this case, it is actually a fixed value. Uh, so we could just say fixed value and change it to 0.1. Uh, and there you go. Right? They're all the same size. <clears throat> um, or, just to show it again, if we click those horizontal error bars... We could go, hmm, well, now they're tiny. They're hard to click on. Let's try that again. Hmm. Okay, that was weird. Um, instead of doing fixed value, uh, we could do custom still. You might, I mean, if your data is collected and it's definitely all done, there's no harm in doing fixed value. Uh, one reason I might suggest selecting this column anyway is that if you realize you made a mistake or if you go back and take take new data, um, if you change what's in this column here under time uncertainty, then the error bars on your graph will automatically change. You won't, you won't have to go back in and change them yourself. So either as a fixed value or uh, as a custom value, there you go. Uh, every data point has its own custom error bars. And that's all this video is about. So uh, good luck.